Are you looking for a podcast about gloves that you got just a little bit of pee on? Well, then you must be thinking of another podcast. Ew! Fucking 2020, Kelsey. 2020, Robert. Kinda drives me to drink. Yep. Fuck this year. Fuck it, fuck it. I hate it so much. It is, it, it is just the weirdest year. It is the bag of shit that keeps on giving. I know. It just doesn't quit getting weirder. I'm trying to, like, come up with some kind of a metaphor. It's like, you know how in cartoons, they have, probably in real life too, but they have, like, <laughs> big, toxic like drains going into a river yes i feel like my life is this river and my big toxic drain is 2020 oh God. just spewing and spewing and spewing did you hear that we're getting a um like a sandstorm from africa it's blowing across the ocean and it's gonna hit the u.s oh my god because you know why not why not just have that too that sounds like a good time. Is it bringing more of the murder hornets? Because those disappeared, seemingly. Well, so I watch this YouTube guy. Do you know Coyote Peterson? <laughs> I don't. Is he a real coyote? Oh, man. No, he's like he's like our American um, crocodile hunter type guy. Of course his fucking name is Coyote. Is his real name Coyote? Like, that's his yes. Christian name? I think so. His yeah. parents, like, birthed him, and they were like, this one we will call Coyote. <laughs> I think so. I love it. So he does a YouTube. So he's not on TV. He does a YouTube, right? Okay. He does a YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And it's called, you'd think I fucking know because I like watch it, but it's yeah. like the something wilderness, right? Okay. He's the guy that was uh, letting all the different uh, insects sting him and he was like rating oh, them Jesus. on the like pain index scale or whatever. Coyote Peterson. Okay. Oh, I, I recognize his face. I've seen gifts yeah. of him for sure. I love Coyote Peterson. He's a fucking cool dude. But he did a thing on the murder hornets. Uh, it's called Brave Wilderness. Brave Wilderness. Brave oh, his, Wilderness his is full legit, name man. Is Nathaniel Peterson. Coyote okay. is just his his wild name. So he did a video on the murder hornets, like right after they were there, and he's like. Unless they fucking, like, mass produce, like, crazy, like, tomorrow, you're not gonna see them. He's like, and you don't normally see these kind of animals anyway. Like, they're not as big a deal as we make it sound. Okay. He's like, they'll probably die out on their own because they're in a place that they don't know. So don't worry about it. And I was like, oh, right. actually, He actually just got a, uh, a series on Animal Planet. Nice! Yeah. Oh, dude, I would fucking watch that. Well, I love him. Good news, you can. He has, uh, 18 episodes out there. Anyway, oh, well, speaking of wild animals, did you, did you hear what's making a comeback? No. Good old Nessie. Oh, shit. She been spotted. All right. Yay. Bring on Nessie. That's good news for 2020. Uh, well, yeah, that's something. We got to get something. That's a positive beat, right? So apparently somebody was on holiday while in Scotland and just like saw this thing in Loch Ness and was like, what? Oh, 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 and just like snapped a picture, right? <laughs> okay. No one knows what it is. Tons of people are like, eh, it's just a really big fish, or, oh, it's just like a seal or something, right? See, okay, I'm looking at the picture, and it's framed in such a way that you can't tell if this thing is like... Like the scale, right? Yeah, you can't tell if it's like a, a small bass fish, or if I'm looking at a humpback whale here, like what? Dude, because to me, to me, this photo looks huge. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like that tree sort of in the bottom left, it looks like yeah. a, a full-grown big old tree you know yeah dude i'm thinking this is like a big thing down there so who knows we might actually get fucking loch ness monster in 2020 who knows god i hope so this year's full of this is the year of anything can happen that's really kind of how is. how it feels no no uh no limits on the good or the bad anything at all could happen at any time exactly so to cope with 2020 i have decided to finally buckle down and watch Mr. Bending Man, Avatar, okay. last one of his kind. Okay. Um, I haven't I haven't started yet, so I have no. <laughs> oh God! Oh oh, I'm gonna just buckle down, but you know, not yet. I'm preparing emotionally to watch it because I have heard that it's yes, a ride. Dude. Like every 
everything I see about Avatar, I'm lucky, I guess, to not have it ever spoiled for me. Like, I have <gasps> zero idea what to expect going into it, other than it's super, super good. Dude, okay, so that's how it was for me. Like, it was on Nickelodeon whenever, right? Yeah. And I would watch it, but I never knew what was going on. But I also didn't know this was a true, like, you gotta watch it in order. Because there's a story that's happening show to show. Yeah, it's not like Spongebob where you can just pick it up anywhere you want. Yeah, totally not. This is like an adult show that was on Nickelodeon for kids, you know. But here's all I'm gonna say, man. There there are moments in that show that I can think about now and just get truly sad at. I'm like, really? yeah, dude, that part was hardcore. Oh, yeah. <sighs> okay, yeah. I'm that's that's why I'm taking time. I'm gonna emotionally buckle down and prepare for as much of that. The way that show culminates, like it literally brings everything you've experienced in that whole show together at the end. It's not just like, yeah, that happened, and then that's it. Everything okay. that everything that has happened comes comes into play by the end. Do I need to take notes? Everything. <laughs> no, you. I mean, you'll like remember. Oh, it's that guy. Oh man, like. My feelings about this guy, and then you get pay you you get payoffs okay. in the show. It's a great show. I can't wait for you to watch it. All right, good. Speaking of that, payoffs and great show. There's a show coming back in fall 2020. Oh, we're getting more primal. Oh my god, yes! Cartoon Network officially released like a schedule of things that they're going to be releasing. Yeah, and they have hard dates on stuff through the summer, but Primal was slated for fall. And they wrote specifically, this one, that is going to happen. Fuck yeah. So Primal will get the rest of the five shows to see what the fuck happens from that cliffhanger. Oh my god, you know? okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so um, whenever that comes out, we're going to do another oh, full yeah. spoiler cast. Oh, fuck yeah. So you're about to watch a show on Netflix. I finally watched a show on Netflix that you've been bugging me about. Oh, I watched all of Love, Death, and Robots. Oh my god, I haven't seen all of it, but you liked it, didn't you? I watched the first one, because I was like, I was uh, just kind of bored doing something, and I was like, well, yeah. you know what, I'll watch that first one. Kelsey said it's good, and it's like ten minutes, okay. Yeah. The, the first one alone, I was like, yep, I'm I'm good, good to yes. go. Yes, that show, it, it, it like gets its claws into you and drags you under. Oh yeah. It's so good. I, I need to finish watching it, because... I had to okay. stop after, like, the one where the robots attack the farm, you know? Oh, that one was cool. It was yeah. so good, but I was emotional afterward. I was like, oh, everybody's okay. dead. So. Fine then. Fine then. When you finish it, we need to do, like, a primal kind of thing and go through it because... Okay. We could go, like, tie that in with, like, a Black Mirror show. Because yeah, absolutely. It's a whole anthology thing like that. It's so but good. I finished it yesterday, actually. Um, yeah, it's, it's bomb. I loved it. It was great. Good. You fucking called it. I called it. That's up your alley. It's got it Robert was, written man. all over it. It sure did. There's another show that's coming to HBO very soon. HBO so, Max or HBO? I don't know. I just saw a commercial for it on HBO, so I have to assume it's going to be airing on HBO. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up so I can tell you some more information about it, but it's called Lovecraft Country. And it's being produced oh, okay. by Jordan Peele and J.J. Abrams. Okay. So I'm super stoked about it. So I'm let's... guessing it's about Lovecrafty and stuff. That's what I'm assuming. I don't know. So it seems like it's going to draw a lot. You know, Jordan Peele does so much with, like, racist themes in America. Yeah. And Lovecraft was a big, fat racist back in the day. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm... It's about, um, okay, so the, the synopsis here, Atticus Black joins his friend Letitia and his uncle George to embark on a road trip across 1950s Jim Crow America in search of his missing father. So, so maybe yeah. not so much the, the monster side, but J.J. Abrams well, could, could bring that aspect in, though. Here's the thing, is like, every Lovecraft story starts this way, like, okay. oh, somebody went missing, and then like, they go and investigate and it turns out like, oh, there's cultists everywhere and they're all going to kill us and we have to get away <laughs> yeah. from this big, snaky monster in the sky. Okay. But the preview for it looked amazing and I need to send it to you so you can see it. Yeah, I'll have to watch it. Because you told me about a movie that was on Netflix and I watched the trailer for that. Oh, um, The Platform. Yeah. I was about it! That looked fucking real. It looked Dude. gross. I was in it the whole time. Ugh. Oh, man. 
So yeah, send me this trailer. I'll check that out. Okay. And then there's another one that's also coming to HBO that I'm super pumped about. So okay. people that are fans of true crime will be very familiar with the case of the Golden State Killer. Okay. Um, the TV show is called I'll Be Gone in the Dark. And it is like the story of um, this true crime investigator named Michelle McNamara. Okay. She I know that in- name. Do you? Okay. She was investigating um, the Golden State Killer for a very long time. She was reading. She was writing her book, All Be Gone in the Dark, and um, tragically passed away before she could finish the book. Okay. But the uh, cops were able to take the research that she had done, and she had suggested, like, maybe we can get some DNA from relatives in, like, the 23andMe database or whatever, and use that with the DNA evidence found at the crime scene to start comparing it to people that may be related to the killer instead of finding the killer himself, you know? Okay. So it was the first, like, case where that technique was pioneered. Hmm. Okay. And they ended up catching him, like, three months after her death. Damn! I know! So her legacy lives fucking on forever and ever. Yeah. And it's just... That's dope. It's super incredible, and I am really, really excited to see it, just to okay. kind of see... You know how they break it down. So, is it going to be like more of like a documentary style thing, kind of in yes. the vein of that uh, the OJ show that came so out? So, it's going to be like a six episode docu series. So, I okay, think it's going to be cool. interviews with people that are working on the case, interviews with other true crime writers, and stuff like that. Gotcha. It looks so okay. good, and I'm so excited for it. Also, speaking of crime, <laughs> okay. Um, there's this podcast that I have just started listening to. It's called Ear Hustle. Okay. <laughs> um, I know it's a cute that, name. That's a great name. Yeah. I love it. Um, so Ear Hustle is prison slang for eavesdropping. And the podcast okay. is actually produced in San Quentin by prisoners. Oof. Okay. Which is fucking cool. That is uh, wild. I know. It's crazy. So I made it a point. I had talked earlier about this, that I was making a point to introduce more voices of color into my podcast library because yeah. everything I listen to is just white people. So, mm. um, Ear Hustle is hosted by, let's see, inmate Erlon Woods. Okay. And his friend, inmate Antoine Williams. And uh, it's produced by the company called Radiotopia, which is a pretty big podcasting company. But um, it's just about, like, the daily realities of life inside prison, and you're hearing it from the people that are living it. So it's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, that just makes it so... It's just real. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. I highly recommend listening to it if you're interested in the prison system at all. I think, um, without getting too soapboxy, the prison system fucking sucks, and it needs a full reform. I don't want to get too heavy on this, but like the, the whole COVID outbreak right now is affecting prisons so hard and it, it's tragic and horrible. You're just cramming these people in together. Yes. It's a nine by four cell. Giving them the masks and stuff. Yeah. So if somebody gets thrown in, they're just throwing them in that room and boom, it spreads. Yeah. There's been videos that prisoners are leaking on like contraband cell phones. They're willing to risk themselves being caught with a cell phone to get this information out there. They're posting it on Facebook and shit like, hey, these are the terrible conditions that we're living in. We have no yeah. masks. I'm being stuffed in this cell with this guy who has the COVID. So that's fucking wild. It is wild. Um, but yeah, I just freshly started listening to this one and it is really enlightening and sad, but also hopeful. So yeah, it's just good human stories. So if you're a fan of human stories, I highly recommend it. I do have some game stuff for you, though. Oh? So, I think you already have one, but I finally found a Ring Fit Adventure to buy. Oh, my God. Because they are, for real, unattainable. Yes. Like, they once quarantine started happening and people started snatching up switches, Ring Fit Adventure oh, yeah. was the next thing to go. So, I got I got a got an insider tip, oh. and it was like, you better go check Best Buy, like, right now. Oh. So, I, like, go look. It was available. I clicked... Within within one minute, sixty seconds, I had one in the cart, purchase done. Nice, right? Literally a minute or so later, they were sold out again. Oh my god! Why is why is it like this right now? Well, I think Nintendo hasn't even PlayStations are being hard to find now. 
really even xboxes are hard to find out i think the supply chain isn't there so people are buying up what was there but we're just having a hard time replacing it all okay i don't think it's that you know we're just not stocking the shelves with what we already have it's like yeah you bought all that was made we we need more to come in and be packaged first and then we can get it to you but then you buy it up again supply and demand people so finally got a ring fit adventure haven't tried it yet but i will soon because i've been what i've heard that like you really get a workout from it so that's yeah. a good thing for while you're just at home you know definitely uh i don't know how good it is for cardio i've only played it a couple of times um i mean they encourage you so you're supposed to like hold the ring out in front of you at like yeah you know elbow level i guess and when you run, you're supposed to, there's like a thing you strap around, you strap the Joy-Con to your thigh, which is fucking wild. Yeah. And uh, it measures how horizontal you get the Joy-Con. So like the higher you pick your knees up while you're running, the faster you go. So since we're in an apartment, yeah. the reason why I <laughs> wanted to get one is because they have like an apartment mode. Oh, really? It. So like you don't have to run in... You basically more just do squats instead. Okay. But there is a mode for, like, if you live above somebody, we know you can't be jumping around and stuff. Yes. But there's a mode to give you the same level of cardio and all that stuff, but it's a different set of maneuvers. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll try that because I I don't enjoy the knee-high running. It doesn't make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> it does not bring joy. I'll do squats all day. It is a fucking arm workout, though. That, that, that big ring that they give you, it's yeah. made of some... Some insane material. I don't even know. Dragon scales. And you have to, like, push on it and pull on it. Really works them arms right out. I can't wait to try it out. I've That's always wanted fun. to, so. As far as fitness games go, it's it's a good time. Okay. Also, I I need to know if you're going to fall in love with a dragon That's that you have to beat. Okay. Because, holy shit, have we seen the art on the, on the internet about him? No. Okay. Um... <laughs> I'm so hesitant to show you this guy. So I mean, I mean, I know who he is. I've seen him. Okay, so you've seen him in his little tight onesie and his big buff arms. What do you yeah. think the internet did with him? Well, I can only imagine he's yeah. become like a something. You, you, you don't have to go far in Google Images. <laughs> Type in Ring Fit Adventure Dragon and just scroll a little. That is exactly what I typed in. And you're going to see just... Some artwork, man. <laughs> it gets a little, uh, a little spicy. Oh well, here he's just a uh, licking his peck. That's fine. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It's fine. I'm just seeing like screenshots of the game. I don't see pictures of him at all. Okay, and I even have the same thing in there. Ring Fit Adventure Dragon. Okay, um, I do like his like bodybuilding stance he has in this picture. Okay, I'm gonna send you this one. Okay. What's wrong with that? He looks awesome. I mean, it's not. It's it gets it gets spicier. I guess. I mean, they just draw his. Uh, oh my god! Okay, I really okay. thought he was just gonna be full on like naked or something. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. Um, I assume I got to go to DeviantArt for that though. I'm gonna send you this link that I'm looking at right now and see if you see the same shit that I'm seeing because I'm, I'm my Google history is wrecked. Yeah, I'm looking at all the same stuff. Why is mine so different? Let me send you a screenshot. Yeah, like, I don't see any, like, bulges or a anything. I'm just seeing, like, well, this one's pretty wild. He's, uh, doing, like, a downward dog, and we're looking from underneath. <laughs> That's a pretty wild one. Oh, okay, well, what's this now? He's just a big buff man. He's a, he's a big buff man. Man, I love him. Doing wild things with that ring. <laughs> Well, I mean, oh, okay. I mean, I see what some people could do with that ring with him. Yep. Haven't seen a picture of that yet, but I'm sure that will pop up later. I will research this further. Okay. Well, I'll let you know when I finally try it out. All right. Uh, well, I did try one thing out, though. What'd you try? I did play Last of Us Part Two. Oh, shit, I should have said A little bit. Just I a little bit. I thought you were going to touch it until you had, like, time. I basically... <sighs> I just wanted to do, like, the big opener, you know? Okay. I mean, the big opener in part one is, like, 15 minutes, maybe. Like, it doesn't take long to do the big opener, right? Yeah. The big opener for this one is, like, 
three or four hours in. Jesus. Because we played it for like maybe an hour and a half the first night, and then maybe another hour and a half the next night. So like three hours in, and finally like what I would consider the big opening happens. Yeah. Right? So um, here's all I'll say about it for now. Uh, I just wanted to give early thoughts until I go through the whole thing and then I can give you like a big review. Okay. Yes. Early thoughts. The game is super pretty. Okay. Which I knew it would be. That's awesome. The big emotional opening for this one is so below part one. Yeah. I mean. I mean, part one hits. It does. I just played that opening again the other day and fucking it got me again. <laughs> Me and Taylor kind of looked at each other at this one, and we're like, I know that I should be sad, but I'm not feeling it. Like, it didn't hit, it didn't hit the same level as, like, that one did, because that one was, like, a super surprise. Yeah. I guess we knew something was going to happen, but, I mean, I'm mad a a bit at, at what happened. Okay. But I will say this, though. The trailers for this game openly lie to you about what is happening in this game. Really? There are moments in the trailer that are in the game that go 0% the way they are in that trailer. Okay. To the point that, like, people are omitted from the trailer versions that are in the real game version. Interesting. Like, you see the exact same scene, but you're like, oh, well, yeah, I guess if this person was in that scene in the trailer, I would know not to think this. Yeah. Okay. Or, oh, okay. So, yeah. The trailers openly mislead you as to what's going on, which to me is a good thing, because then you're not just, like, waiting for that thing to happen. Yeah. But, um, I played through the big emotional opening, and I'm definitely ready to keep going, because I am mad, and I'm already on (laughs) Ellie's side. Okay. Okay. So we'll just see where it goes from here. All right. I'm excited to see uh, more about it. I've been looking at reviews and uh, I just, I just want to, I want to hear your review before I get into everything else that I'm seeing. (laughs) Well, all I can say is, because I actually haven't read many more reviews since like it first came out, you know? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. I just wanted to get like the general consensus and people like, yeah, it's good. It's just not like a game changer. Okay. And I'm like, okay. That's that's good to know. I'm probably going to be ultra violent. Like I'm probably not going to care. I think the way like some people are like the game wants you to care. I don't think they are going to want me to care. Okay. <laughs> I, I think they're leading me to be an angry person. Interesting. Cuz the game right. the game's not about me. It's about how she feels in that situation. Like me as a person separated from it would go, "Well, yeah, I guess we should just stop here and be be okay." Yeah. But you're not that person. You're not in there. Yeah. So we had talked about this earlier, how uh, you have to, it's it's not the game that you're making choices, right? You're, you're on the, the yeah. ride for this story for yeah. another person. But here's all I can say. There are very few games where I wasn't siding with my person in the game. Yeah. And that I had trouble doing something that I needed to do. Okay. Because uh, in The Last of Us Part 1. Yeah. You know, you essentially become the bad guy at the end of the game. Right. And you kill the doctors. I fucking was 100% on Joel's side. I said, save that little girl. <laughs> and I shot them doctors in the face so fast. Fuck. No question. I said, give me that baby girl. And we left. Like, I was in his mindset. I was in his feelings, you know. Yeah. And I was ready to go. It's not until the game ends that you're like, was that really the best choice? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, we'll see how I feel going through her stuff with her. All right. Uh, there is another game that was just announced for the Switch. Mm-hmm. It is a Pokemon MOBA. A Pokemoba, if you will. Yeah, I totally missed this thing today. Like, I heard that a Pokemon MOBA was being made, and I was like, I don't really care, I guess. Yeah. That's like a, that's like a Destiny, right? So... I'm not super clear on what the concept of a MOBA is. It's like, it's like Fortnite, right? I sound so old right now. It's like Fortnite, right? <laughs> what is a Fortnite? 
Oh, um, well, I guess you're right. Because so a MOBA is a multiplayer online battle arena. Right. Like oh, I, so it's so it's kind of like a Dota or a League of Legends. That's as well. So that's the thing is I think it's it's made by um. Where to go? Okay, so it's made Tencent. by Tencent. Yeah. And Tencent is known for a game called Honor of Kings, which I guess is a mobile MOBA that is popular in China. And they okay. hold a large stake in Riot Games, which is the studio behind League of Legends. Okay. So I guess, you know, if if that company is going to make a game with Pokemon, it would be a MOBA. Yeah. Um, I've, I've never really played one. I don't think I have a uh, interest in it. I don't either. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. I, like we had discussed before, my only interest in Pokemon, it stops at Pokemon Snap and the cards. Well, I mean, I guess you have to think about it like this. When you think Pokemon game, every single one that's come out has been like the same thing, just with right. new Pokemon. So I think this is a good idea because you need to be able to branch that franchise out to other types of things, you know? Yeah. It can't always just be this or else, I mean... Clearly, that formula is not going to die. Right. But in any other franchise, you can't stay that exact same thing for as long as Pokemon has and still be around. Yeah. This, this Pokemon's is, the anomaly. It is. It has been around for so, so long. And part of me wonders, like, if it's just because Pikachu is so goddamn cute, you know? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. He's He's carrying the franchise for certain. I mean, of course he is. So from the trailer that I see, it looks like basically a five on five team battle where in you play a Pokemon and you work okay. with four other Pokemon against another team and you're trying to get a base on an island or something. I will have to watch this trailer. I can't tell if you're playing weird. a trainer or if you're playing the Pokemon. Well, but it's not like either of us are going to play it. So yeah, <laughs> it's called Pokemon <laughs> Unite for those of you who are interested. I like that title, though. Yeah. I do like that. The trailer kind of made me, I don't know, reminiscent for Pokemon, because it just shows kids, like, trading and holding cards and, like, playing made tournaments Made me reminiscent for that game I never played. Well, you know, <laughs> it just made me a little bit like, wow, Pokemon has stood the test of time. It really has. It is surprising to me how much people are still just as hard about it. Maybe it's because they just keep getting new generations of stuff, you know? Well, but, like, even, even like, young kids still just, like, gravitate towards it. There's just something about Pokemon that How can you deny works. it? Appeal. I know. It just works. Maybe I'll have to check out the trip. Maybe, maybe that'll be my first MOBA, because Pokemon will pull me in it. That's, like, my bridge. You know? Yep. That's your gateway drug. I kind of have a quick game for you. A game? Because I was looking at something the other day, and I was like, you know what? I kind of miss these. Speaking of reminiscent of things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I really miss? What do you miss? Movie taglines. Do they not do taglines anymore? I feel like it's not as big a deal anymore. Really? Like, you you don't really hear the taglines too much. Yeah, but like, I guess I'm trying to think of... Yeah, think of the most recent tagline <laughs> that you can think of. You can't. They're not as popular, you know? Don't horror movies have taglines usually? Usually horror movies, I think. And like comedies then, too, probably. I, I can't think yeah. of any off the spot. Like, I, okay, so you just said that... Okay, that's actually a pretty good one. Uh, I was thinking of Lights Out. With the yeah, like, where, where the thing comes in the dark. I was That's like, exactly the one that I was thinking of for some reason. Where they're that like, would probably have a good one, and it does. What is it? It says, "Darkness will consume you." Oh, oh. oh that's a good one. I like that. But yeah, like, when did you hear that in like the promotional stuff for it? it yeah, it's just never. Not, it's just not a thing. Because I was looking up a movie and I read that tagline and I was like, "Oh my god, taglines used to be so stupid sometimes." I right? know. And so I was thinking about seen it, and I used to always get the tagline questions every time. <laughs> but so I kind of wanted to bring to you some of the worst ones. Oh, hell yeah. And you got to give me the movie. But just yes. to give you some good ones, okay? Okay. These are good ones. These are like some of the top ones. What is just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water? Oh, that's Jaws. That's Jaws 2. 
Oh. But still. <laughs> See, look. You instantly know, right? I know it's the good, shark. A good tagline takes you straight to that movie, right? Yes. How about... Just for you. Part man, part machine, all cop. No, that's RoboCop. <laughs> that's RoboCop. <laughs> okay. In space, no one can hear you scream. I was totally going to say that for an example of, like, a good that's tagline. A good one. That's maybe, like, the iconic tagline. It's so good. What is it, though? That's Alien. Okay. Like, see? Those are good ones, right? Yes. Like, you just you just know. Right. Right? So, I looked up some bad ones. Okay. And I was like, man, sometimes they are bad. And one of these that I'm going to give you... I, I'm going to give you the movie because I know you like the movie so much and you got to give me the tagline. Oh no, okay. B- but that's our closer. So, here's one. When you can live forever, what can you live for? Oh, fi- uh, Click? Can he live forever? No. I don't know. This would be Twilight. Oh, gross. <laughs> when you can live forever, what can you live for? Doesn't that sound stupid? It really does. <laughs> okay, I've seen this one. I'm not even going to make you guess, because you'll never know, but I just have to give you this one. It's considered the worst tagline of all time. Okay. It's It says, unwittingly, he trained a dolphin to kill the president of the United States. <laughs> what? For That's gone the rogue. tagline. This is called The Day of the Dolphin. Okay. What kind of movie? I kind of want to watch this movie. I do, too. Actually, that might be the best tagline ever. Because he unwittingly trained the dolphin. Yeah, how do he didn't you... even mean to. <laughs> Oops, I gave the dolphin a gun. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, great things come in bears. <laughs> <laughs> is that Brother Bear? No, this is Yogi Bear. Oh, my God. Like, see, I think I think you're right. Kids movies and stuff probably have, have big ones. Yeah. Okay, I feel like you're gonna get this one. You can't handle the tooth. Ew, ew, I hate that. <laughs> um, I don't know, what's a tooth movie? This is the Tooth Fairy with The Rock. Oh my god. You remember that movie? Yes. I never saw it, but, um, this is so great. Life is for living. I mean... <laughs> Life is for living. Life is for living. Uh, that's... <laughs> That's got to be a child's movie, uh, in- Inside Out. No, this is Charlie St. Cloud with Zac Efron. Okay. I kind of remember when it came out. Oh, you're going to love this one. Unless you know his movies. This says, science created him. Now Chuck Norris must destroy him. What? <laughs> That's a movie's tagline. Um, Walker, Texas Ranger versus Frankenstein. This is Silent Rage. Okay. Whatever that movie is. So there's just all these taglines that you're like, people got paid to make these. What How about this my one? tagline would be as a person? When a girl has a heart of stone, there's only one way to melt it. Just add ice. <sighs> uh, frozen Medusa. It's a movie with vanilla ice in it, and oh, it's called Cool as Ice. Jesus Christ, I hate him so much. <laughs> <laughs> So there's just all these taglines that are just ridiculous, right? Yeah. Okay. He was dead, but he got better. <laughs> Fido? No. Have you seen Fido? I have not. Oh, Fido's so good. No, this is Crank with a... Uh... Liam Neeson? No, the dude I don't like. Um, Jason Statham. Ah, same thing. You don't Crank's like Jason the one... Statham? Nah, he just bothers me. Okay. Um, that's the one where, like, he gets the heart, but he can only live if he keeps his adrenaline level up to a certain thing. So it's I don't speed, know. but for a human. But, a but, like, a human heart, yes. Okay. So there's all these ones, but then this is the one that made me even think to look these up. Kelsey. Robert. This movie is Die Hard 2. Oh my god. Give me the tagline to oh, Die Hard 2. Oh no. Oh no. Um... Remember, these are bad taglines. I die harder. <laughs> I don't know. It is die harder. Is it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Die hard to die harder. <laughs> <laughs> so doesn't that mean his job would be easier this time around? He's having a harder time dying. <laughs> if you ask me, that's one of the best taglines of all time. I was like, how on? Un- 
that doesn't even really work that well. It's just die harder. <laughs> the second one, you know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, I was just looking up tag. I saw that one first. And then I was like, what other weird taglines are there? And came across articles of just horrible taglines. Those are wonderful. Thank you for I, sharing. <laughs> you are welcome. I'm going to send this to you so you can read all these. Oh, okay. I have to give you this one. The tagline's okay. It To me, it's bad because of a grammatical error. Uh-oh. Tagline for this is a girl, period, a machine gun, period, a revenge, <laughs> period. Can you say a revenge as a sentence on its own? I mean, as much as a girl is a sentence on its own. But I mean, it's like a girl. There it is. A machine gun. There it is. A revenge. You, it's not a thing that you can say, there's a revenge. Well, revenge is technically a noun. I guess. That that one just sits weird with me. It a does. revenge. Yeah. At the end. It just doesn't work to me. A revenge. But I would love to watch this movie with you because it's called The Machine Girl and she is missing an arm that what? is a chain gun. Holy shit. And it's just hardcore grindhouse vibes. I would love to watch this with you one day. That sounds like a good time. Sending you the the poster. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So. From the creators of Meatball Machine. I want to see that one. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) So anyway, that was my little game. I just was really bothered by some of these taglines. And really bothered that your franchise would be so lazy as to just say, (laughs) it's Die Hard. How about he's dying harder? I mean... It's kind of perfect, honestly. Which makes me mad that the third one isn't Die Harder or Die Hardest. Or Die Hardest, yeah. Die the most hard. <laughs> See, if you're going to do it with the second one, you should have kept that theme the rest of the way. Die harder than the first. <laughs> the hardest. More harder than hard, or something. Harder arrest. So. Oh, man. Well, I spent all weekend playing a- another game. Okay. It's called The Talos Principle. Okay. So this is a pretty popular puzzle game. It was recommended to us on Steam based on our interest in the one I reviewed last pod, which the name escapes me now. What the fuck was the name of that game? The The Turing Test one? The Turing Test, yes. Yeah. So Talos Principle, uh, we played through it. It took us probably about 40 hours, but we slammed through it in like a good long weekend. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Um, I want to show you the cover of it because I just... Oh, I've... Yeah, I've got it here with the you got it robot up. and the cat. Yeah, he's got a little kitten in his arms. There's yeah. no kitten in this game. I don't know why okay. this is the cover of the game, but I just love it. Um, it's, it's one of those games. So it's a puzzle game where you're in, like, a world and you're finding out more about the world as you go. It got such high ratings from... Every single source, like Eurogamer, yeah. GameSpot, everybody, they all gave it like a 9 out of 10 or 9.5 yeah, out of 10. I've heard of this game. Yeah. It's like, this is a game to know. It is highly recommended. Um, it's a beautiful game. It's absolutely gorgeous. The environment is seamlessly wonderful and perfect. The The rendering distance, like you can see for fucking ever in this game. And it's, okay. it's just gorgeous. Like the leaves on the trees are pretty. There's like a, a nice ambient fog in the distance it's you're in kind of like a ruiny castle type environment for most of it and then also okay. in a desert for another part and it's just it's very pretty yeah as far as the mechanics go in this game the game is very specific in what it wants you to do and if you don't do exactly that <laughs> the game is like you cannot do it so, <laughs> okay. so it's it's adamant in its mechanics, which I like for a puzzle game, but it was frustrating because I couldn't like cheat my way out of some stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, so basically, you have like a few different functions that you can do. You're trying you're trying to get through these different puzzle rooms, basically. So you have electronic jammers where you can jam open a, an electronic gate, and then you can walk through okay. it into the next part. But when you turn around, you can't grab the jammer through the gate. You have to like be on the side of the gate with the jammer it'll trap you in so okay that's what i mean about about stubbornness like it won't let you cheese things like that yeah but the learning curve on this game was 
insanely steep. Like it starts out where you're just like, here's a gate that you can open with a jammer. And then you go into the next room and it introduces a second concept. And then you go into the next room and it's like, here's both of those concepts, but we flip them on their head and we multiplied it by 57. So we actually introduced a new mechanic, but we're not going to show you that one. (laughs) So it was really complex and frustrating and fun but also like really made us pull our hair out for a lot of it okay um the lore of the game is extremely deep but you only find out the lore by interacting with these like terminals that you can talk to it's like it's like a like an old school telnet thing that you're just inputting text into like hello (laughs) okay it gives you options to like different things you can say to this robot and it's kind of an archive that you're able to look so you basically have to like seek out the information it's not just like oh here's some emails to read it's like well no i want to learn this and then you have to like go dig it out it's pretty much just like you you interact with the robot for a couple of you know paragraphs or whatever you have a conversation with them that can go in a certain number of branched ways and then you get access to like a series of emails that you get to read and half of them are just like tales of mythology, which I do find mythology and philosophy really interesting topics on their own. But when combined with this setting of a video game where you're like, you don't know exactly what's going on. You don't know what's up with the world that you're in. Yeah. It was really boring to have to dig <laughs> oh. through all of this and like try to ingest the lore email by email. Yeah. But I mean... We liked it enough to complete the three different endings that it had. <laughs> Jeez. And okay. we did solve every single fucking puzzle in this game, so I'm proud of us for that. Um, nice. How do you feel about game guides? Oh, well, look at that. It said published by Devolver Digital. My oh, really? People. Well, there you go. I love it. Okay. Um, I am not averse to game guides. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, I'm usually playing a game for the story so right i'll use a game guide to get through a hard spot if i don't really feel like i want to do it exactly yeah so like if i'm trying to get to the story beat and it's like well this is just obnoxiously hard for no reason yes i don't really feel some people (laughs) play the games for the gameplay so it's like i feel that like achievement for having solved it and i'm like i just want to know what happened so scoop yeah. You know, so, like, I'm fine with that. If it was one of those things where it was, like, a platforming thing and I kept missing the same jump over and over or something, you know, where I could eventually learn the mechanic and do it. Yeah. Then I would be happy to keep trying the mechanic. But for some of these, the puzzles are so insanely complex that it takes a six paragraph walkthrough and you still don't understand what they're doing. It's like, okay, take this jammer, walk through this door and then use that laser connector to connect to that laser. But then you also have to do this laser and that one floats. And it's just... yeah. Oh my god, it was so frustrating. <laughs> and then you get to the lore, and it's not even, like, a satisfying conclusion to that puzzle. You're like, I got through this puzzle for this piece of something that I don't even know what it means. Where this guy goes, hey, do you remember Zeus? He was cool. God. It was it was obnoxious at times. Um, I Overall, the game was satisfying to play, but it was frustrating in the fact that it's, I don't know, there's there's like gateways that you have to get through and there's not a satisfying end to the gateway. So like each yeah. puzzle you solve, you get a Tetris piece essentially. And once you collect a certain number of Tetris pieces, you get to go play fucking Tetris and solve another Tetris puzzle to unlock okay. more shit that makes your puzzles even harder. And I was just like, I hate Tetris so much. Like Tetris to me is just... Uh. <laughs> I love Tetris. Oh my god, I'm, it's, I I just, every time I look at a Tetris board, the pieces falling down is just like pieces of my life that I cannot control, and they <laughs> pile up to the ceiling so fast, and I'm buried amongst my mistakes. Oh. oh I can't do Tetris. It just it stresses me out so much. Um, so yeah, your reward for playing these shitty, challenging puzzles is to do more shitty, challenging puzzles. <laughs> But, was there at least a satisfying like ending to it though? So we did all three endings. One of them was like, "All right, that kind of sucked." Uh, another one was like, "Okay, I felt pretty good about that." And then the last one, it was like, "Fuck yeah!" So I feel like 
the ends did justify the means, but the means were very mean. Yeah. So I recommend it. Um, If you like puzzlers, this is a game for you. It's got like close to 20,000 reviews on Steam and it's five stars. So I mean, I've always heard about it. So yeah, it's. It's fun. I feel like if we didn't use a game guide, we probably would have spent 150 hours on it. Yeah. And we we completed literally every single puzzle that you can do in this game. All the side missions, all the secret puzzles, all the like hidden shit, we got it. And we only got like 40% of the achievements. So I'm like, what <laughs> okay. is the rest of this game? It's probably like drop this piece or like put this piece in upside down 50 times or Maybe. something weird. I don't know. You know? <laughs> just, yeah. But it was fun. It was just frustrating. Well, sounds like a good weekend though. Like a good mind workout. Yeah. It was a nice, uh, I like to relax by tying my mind in knots. Okay. So I was on Twitter today and I saw this thread that like made me cry laughing and I just have to share it with you. Okay. So let me get a good, sip and then i will narrate this story to you i'm ready all right twitter user aaron reynolds i've started a new evening ritual i leave all my technology inside except my walkman and i get into the hammock in the backyard and listen to an album from start to finish my cat has been curious about this new habit and i've been trying to coax him into the hammock tonight with some rolling stones I've never really given them a fair shake, so I'm working through the stones in a mono box set. And, like clockwork, my big gray lump of a cat shows up. I make some space and start patting the hammock, asking him to jump up. And to my delight, he decides to climb into the hammock. Except not in a very cat-like way. Huh. At this point, I should let you know that my backyard is very dark, and I don't see well. Okay. (laughs) I've just invited a raccoon into the hammock with me. (laughs) And the raccoon has a blind (laughs) The raccoon stares at me for a while like, you invited me up here. Now what? (laughs) Now what indeed? So I very slowly put one foot down and then the other on either side of the hammock and slowly try to stand up. I'm maintaining eye contact with the raccoon as if my life depends on it. (laughs) Here is my second miscalculation of the evening. As I take my weight off the hammock, the raccoon starts to slide toward the middle. (laughs) Okay. I'm straddling the hammock and the raccoon is sliding straight at my crotch <laughs> and all I can think of is the laser scene in Goldfinger. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I chuckle a little. The raccoon doesn't like this noise or he doesn't like the sliding or both. He tries to turn around and climb back into his end of the hammock but instead now I'm straddling the raccoon like I'm playing horsey with it. <laughs> I shout something. Maybe Christ? I don't know. The raccoon also makes a kind of disgruntled old man noise that probably means the same thing. I do a profoundly inelegant dismount, bringing one leg way up way too high to get it over the raccoon and end up falling on the ground. The raccoon looks at me from the hammock. He grunts. He settles in. The raccoon is outside in what I assume is now his hammock. I am inside on the couch with ice on my groin because I definitely pulled something. Anyway, I'm still not a fan of the Rolling Stones. (laughs) Dude that raccoon was never gonna hurt you he got in your hammock he just wanted to chill man (laughs) he just wanted to cuddle i would not have been scared i'd have been like oh as long as you just cuddle and he probably just like curled right up and let you know just like sat there can you imagine just like accidentally inviting a raccoon into your hammock and the raccoon's like yeah man let's cuddle and uh, i would just be like all right just don't move fast (laughs) that made me so happy today i left way too hard when i first read it i cried that's hilarious but i just want to know why this this man in today is using a walkman to go outside and listen to music on nice and peaceful you know get away from technology just like hey i'm gonna go listen to this rolling stone cassette tape bye bye (laughs) just trying to to yearn for an older sound i guess i guess well you ready to uh get out of this hammock yes very slowly Hey guys, please tell your friends and your raccoons about us. Help us grow this audience. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. We release weekly, every Monday. Never missed it. The beginning of your week, you know you got some yimtope to look forward to. If you have a second, please go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. That would really mean a lot to us and help out the show so much. 
While you're out there, you can find us and friend us on social media. We are at YMBTOAP on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to like and follow our Facebook page and subscribe to our channels on YouTube and Twitch. We got some good stuff out there. Don't miss it. You can also email us at YMBTOAP at gmail.com. Remember, it stands for You Must Be Thinking of Another Podcast. We want that listener mail. You can send us emails about what games you're playing in quarantine. If you're going to uh, play that Pokemon Unite MOBA, if you're into MOBAs at all. And let us know if you would have exited the hammock or just let the raccoon (laughs) snuggle right in. Uh, Our theme song is The Grim Reaper Blows the Horn by Farage. Please check him out on YouTube. He's still pumping out great stuff, even though we're all stuck at home. Just gives him more time to do some quality work, I guess. And as always, thanks for listening and tune in next time to get the answer to that burning question. What the hell just climbed in my hammock? But we had one more important sound we wanted you to hear. Coffee almost came out my nose. Uh, you're drinking filter. coffee? Oh, man. I'm drinking. This is how old I am. Like, on recording nights, I, my little treat to myself, I pour a cup of hot decaf coffee and I get okay. excited about it. I'm like, ooh, I'm getting ooh, naughty. Ooh. Night coffee. Decaf coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to stay up too late tonight. <laughs> I bought myself decaf coffee for this purpose. Oh, dude. I could straight up drink normal caffeinated coffee and then go straight to fucking bed. I can't, I, I cannot with you. This is why I have a sleep disorder. <laughs> Dude, Taylor's seen me drink a Dr. Pepper, like, on my nightstand as I'm going to bed. I'm just like, oh, and then like, one more little sippy. But you're just like that with Mountain Dew. I'm like, why are you doing this? It's good. It's so caffeinated. It's yummy. <laughs> we need it. God. We crave it. <laughs>